Good morning, Ms. Ramos. Uh, I'm going to answer your questions today. Hopefully, I do or I give you what I need, what you need. Uh, I'm going to begin with question number one. Uh, who and what inspired me to choose my profession? Uh, well, that one, I believe my, my mother, she was actually a teacher and a principal back in Colombia. And my sister is a teacher as well. But I believe is that um, desire to serve that I noticed on then that guide me through the process. And once I became a teacher, right, uh, I got really good examples. Other teachers, my mentors, uh, I can tell you, uh, Mr. Rendon, a former principal, he was a really, really good influence on me. Uh, my mentor, Dr. Duwa, he taught me a lot. And at that moment, I believe I could make a difference in education. I believe that's, that's as simple as I can go with that. In your own words, that's question number two. How will you define the term leadership? Well, leadership is about service, it's about sacrifices, and it's about example more than anything else. Uh, sacrifices, you will be working harder than everybody else. Service, you have to be there to protect your teachers first, in this case, education teachers or whoever is under you and not only your teachers, but your students in this case. You see, when I was in the classroom, I was able to impact my students directly. Now my decisions impact my teachers and that impact my students. So if I want to reach the students, I need to reach the teachers. And, and I do that by caring, by listening to their needs, taking all the roadblocks out of the way, uh, having an open door policy that will let me handle any issues they may have and being humble, knowing that a leader many times don't have the answer or many times can make mistakes. And we have to recognize those mistakes and we have to recognize we don't have the answers, but it's what we do about it what makes the difference in leadership. So, if you don't know, you are going to help that person get the answer. And if you, um, if you are wrong, you have to say that you are wrong. That's the first step to improve. That will be my answer for question number two. Number three, in my own words, what are the characteristics of an effective leader? The effective leader, uh, what have worked for me, is going at the very front of the pack. Whatever I said or whatever I ask, I do it first. And then during the process, I'm troubleshooting with my staff. It means I will sit with them. If they don't get it at first, I will explain it again. So leadership, effective leadership means taking any role block in the middle of whoever is implementing a strategy and the final result. And in the process, you develop those that are helping you with your vision and you develop yourself. Because when, whenever you give feedback to somebody, you are always learning something. So it's a process where we troubleshoot. And I don't like to use the word uh, I many times because, I'm sorry, I don't like to use the word I many times because I try not to do everything by myself. I try to include my staff, my leadership team, and everybody. So autonomy based on results and inspiration. The four questions. What are the characteristics of an effective leader? So you won't be effective if you are just mandating things. If you are not in the field with your people, 
you won't be effective. You have to influence them. You have to make them believe that the goal is possible and that they are the ones that can make it happen. And it's not just a saying. I base this on the fact that every teacher in this case can be a master teacher. So if they are not, it's my fault. So I try to develop them and I will try to help them improve. So if you are not doing that as a leader, if you are just mandating and saying, this is wrong, this is not the way it is, this is what you have to do, it's my way or the highway, then uh, you won't be effective. You may get things done, but those won't be la long lasting. That's pretty much my view on that. How do you handle conflict? Which is question number five. Uh, there are different types of conflicts. I try to avoid them by creating systems. Uh, what are systems? The way we do things so everybody believes is fair and everybody knows, understand and respect the last decision taken. There are many decisions that can be taken as a group, but there are others that cannot. So those that can, you will never get consensus. It's weird that you will get consensus in something. But when, whenever we decide, everybody needs to understand that it's the best for the, for, for the students in this case and for the school. So they may not have won, but still, they will be uh, accountable for that. They will, they, they will embrace it because they understand the why, okay? So if we got personal conflict, it will be a meeting. Uh, I set rules, I call them rules of engagement. So at the beginning, I will be the mediator and I will say, this is this, we can say this, we can say this, and we cannot say this. If somebody is out of place, we can finish the meeting, as simple as that. Uh, those are few if you are transparent and you are fair with everybody and if you have a good plan. Now, new things will come and you will have to react, right? Which I don't like. But after I react, I create a system so I don't have to react anymore. I will be preventing that from happening the next time. Conflict is good sometimes because you need the resistance. You need the resistors telling you what is going to be wrong because sometimes they are right, okay? If you don't have resistance and you don't have some kind of conflicts when deciding things, your process is going to be uh, halt at some point. It's not going to be well, uh, well done because there is a problem. It will be, they are not telling you what they think and the implementation will pay the price. Number six, how will you define power from a leadership perspective. <sighs> I believe there is not a word of, uh, the word power and leadership doesn't go together. Maybe responsibility. Mm, you got the power of encouraging your crew. You got the power of helping them grow. You got the power of making everybody better. You have the power to make them not make them, to, 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 to influence them to get to your vision. Uh, you got that kind of power, but power as is, and I got the last word that doesn't exist. You may try, and I believe a lot of people try to do that, but it's not last, it, it doesn't last long. So it's not a good approach. So there is, the, the power is won by example. Okay, and the power goes with the position, not with you. So don't believe that you got, uh, that you're going to have it just because. You need, uh, power is something that as soon as you step out of that position, the position will keep the power and you won't. So you have to be the humble person all the time because you really need to know what belongs to you, or in this case, to me, to Roberto, and what belongs to the position. How would you define influence? Influence, that's my favorite word. It doesn't mean that I'm trying to just get uh, people tricked into do things. No, you influence them to be better. How do you do that? 
First, you need to make them believe that it's possible. You need to let them know that they are good at what they do. Everybody needs to know that. But everybody needs to know that they have to improve their craft. So my new saying is, you don't have to be the best, but you have to be better every day. And that way we have been able to move the school up uh, in a short period of time. Just, we were in a really good position until COVID hit. So which term is more important for, from my leadership perspective, power of, or influence? It will be influence. Uh, when, when you got people doing something because they know and they want to do it and they know that there is something greater than them, that they are going to leave a legacy, then they will take ownership. If you use your power or the power of the position to implement something, it won't be long lasting. People won't take ownership. They will do it because you said so, but they will not believe in what you are doing. So more than likely it will not work because we have to make them believe with good examples that we are in this together and we are here to change the world. Okay. Next question. So I go with influence. You need followers. You need people that will take care of you and your kids even when you are not in the building. So you need people committed. Power doesn't create commitment. Nine, what is more important to you as a leader? To be respected, like, or love? Uh, for me, it would be to be respected. Because if you respect me, then uh, you may not agree with me, but you will do it because you know that I don't have anything uh, hidden, any, any kind of agenda. So if you respect me, you know that I'm doing things because of my vision, which in this case is to improve student achievement while helping the, the teachers get better. Okay, so like is a, is a term that you should not use because not everybody will like you, but if you show you, if, if you, if you show that that what you are saying is what you are doing. If you are in synchrony, then they will respect you, even if they don't like the decision you are making. What is more important to you as a leader? To be respected, to be liked, or to be loved? I already told you to be respected. Uh, and I gave you some kind of explanation. The video cut in the middle, so that's why I'm recording again. Uh, but it's to be respected. Not everybody will like you, but if you are a good example, if you do what you said and you said what you do, you, you live through that, then you won't have a problem because people will understand that you are doing it because it's the best for the organization and your final goal. Okay. Do you believe that leaders are born or develop over time? Maybe some will be born, but if they don't uh, pursue what they have to, if they don't train, they will never become a good leader. I don't believe I was born a leader, but I have developed as a leader just because I follow the steps of good leaders. So it means uh, my parents were my role models, models. my teachers were role models, uh, my previous principals were role, role models, my uh, fellow principals, my my peers right now, they are role models. And then you have to read and read and read because uh, leadership takes a lot. And, and it's being humble, being a team player, being the person your staff need at that moment in time. So an example of being developed will be what happened with COVID. I've never, never done a video before COVID, never talk over the public announcement system in the school. I, I'm the person that will go room by room saying, hey, hello, how are you? And you know that I will go and say hello to everybody in the building, but I don't, it was not used to do that. So when COVID hit, I needed to 
ask everybody to record themselves, to do life lesson, to do all this. So that's something that I can, I couldn't talk about at that moment. So I was the first one that video myself. And as I told you, I became a YouTuber and all that just to show that even me, who never has done it, had to do it because the situation required that. So go back to lead by example. You develop as you go and the times will help you doing that. What type of legacy you want to leave others that everything is possible, that you have to be better every day, that uh, feedback is the best way to get better faster, as the book will say. And I want them to know that the sky is the limit. So we can change any life, no matter what happened, no matter the house situation, no matter race, no matter anything. We can change the life with love and plenty of planning. When you are dead and gone, who and what do you want to be remembered as being? An optimist that always believe in teachers and in students. That always believe that teachers, all teachers were master teachers. And it was my duty to help them grow that way and somebody that never gives give up, gives give up uh i believe that's the way i would like to be remembered that i was there i never give up i will take all the roadblocks i can from you and i will uh, be there for you at any time Thank you, Selene. If you got any other questions, please let me know and we can talk over the phone. Okay? Bye.